Okay, hello everyone again. Uh, let's talk about chapter 18 in the Katz book for Physics 209. People outside of that class can also look at this stuff and hopefully still get a lot out of it. So I'm trying to make uh, different videos available to different people, whether or not they're in my class or not for the Physics 209 or, or whether they're in any, any other class for that matter that involves physics. Hopefully this stuff has some far, far reaching uh, hopefully some far-reaching benefit to people regardless of the class that they're in. If you're taking calc-based physics, which is the Physics 209 to which the Katz book pertains, uh, great. I mean, obviously, it's, it's directly associated with that. It's directly pertaining to that. If you are taking Physics 120, uh, non-calc-based physics, there's still application here, okay? Uh, let's take a look at, let's try to do this as best we can from Chapter 8, uh, I'm sorry, forgive me, from chapter 18 in the Katz book, uh, problems, let's look at problems 13, 16, 19, 65, and 66. Those five problems. Let's see how well that goes for us. For problem number 13, I already kind of wrote it down a bit before I even turned on the, the recording for this. I just, there's a lot there. Um, they are looking... You know, they're, they're, they're looking for us to draw this conclusion for the problem I'm about to present to you. Uh, they're looking for us to draw that conclusion if you add these two wave functions together. If you add y sub 1, if you add the y sub 1 wave function and the y sub 2 wave function together, when you add y sub 1 the wave function and y sub 2 the wave function, when you add them together you get y and y will be this. This is initially what they gave us. They said y sub 1 is a wave function looking like this. y sub 1, y sub 1 of x comma t, y sub 2 of x comma t. If we understand that it's, of course, a function of two variables, x and t, we can just call it y1 and y2, just knowing that both of the functions are functions of two variables, x and t y sub 1 is equal to y max, the amplitude in other words, times the amplitude of this function rather. y sub 1 is y max times the sine of the quantity kx minus omega t. y sub 2 is equal to the same y max times the sine of kx minus omega t plus phi, a phase angle. They are practically identical except for the wave angle, uh, ex except for the phase angle right here. When you add these two wave functions together, as we're doing right here, they are making the claim that you get this for a final answer. This guy, all of this, as the final answer. They are telling us the amplitude will be this right here. This will be the new y max. This will be the new y max, the amplitude. New y max, that's the amplitude, and that's equal to the the amplitude is equal to the absolute value of 2 y max cosine phi over 2. Um, also recall, we've seen this. You saw me doing this with e earlier work, you guys. If I add the sine of alpha plus the sine of beta, I get 2 cosine of the quantity, 1 half the quantity alpha minus beta times the sine of the quantity one half times the quantity alpha plus beta. We've already kind of said this in earlier discussions that the, the addition of sine alpha and sine beta is two cosine the quantity one half of the quantity alpha minus beta times the sine of one half times the quantity alpha plus beta. Okay. Uh, yes, true. They are able to derive this using that wonderful mathematical identity e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta and there's a whole bunch you can do with that. If you were to exponentiate, if you were to take e to the i theta and take it to the end, it's the same as taking this. to the n power. True, 
But isn't that itself the same as, isn't that itself the same as, just bring the n inside, go e to the i n theta, and according to that, that'd be cosine the argument, and this, this becomes the new theta. The n theta becomes the new theta. So this right here, it's certainly true, and that is equal to, that is equal to e to the i theta, the whole thing taken to the n. Not the exponent taken to the n, but the quantity e to the i theta, the whole thing taken to the n. So when we got that, you got this. And that would be, as we said, cosine theta plus i sine theta, whole thing taken to the n. Pretty fascinating stuff. I mean, at that point, if I'm saying that the cosine of n theta plus i sine n theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta, the whole thing taken to the n. This is some crazy stuff, guys. If I were to expand this using a special case of the multinomial theorem known as the binomial theorem. The binomial theorem is a special theorem that is a special case of a more general theorem known as the multinomial theorem when you have more than a binomial and you're exponentiating it. Um, well, this is a special ca case of the multinomial theorem. It, it, pres it prescribes for us the use of the binomial theorem here. Get an answer. You're going to have real parts and imaginary parts. And here you got real parts and imaginary parts. All the real parts, all the real parts over here at the end of all the, at the end of the application of the binomial theorem, all the real parts over here, all the real parts over here after the application of the binomial theorem are going to equal this real part. And all the imaginary parts over here are going to equal that imaginary part. So it's a good way to get a lot of identities and do a lot of stuff. Well, anyway, uh, you know, kind of the, the bread and butter of this thing, if you've got this and you're tinkering with how does the exponential function work and what is the great power of the exponential function, how what wonderful mathematics pertains to the exponential function and we can expand it not just we, we can stay we can stay with the real numbers and get some fascinating results but we can also go to the complex realm and dealing with complex numbers will find a lot of identities well to make a long story short you guys this identity can be proved using a lot of this mathematics right here all the mathematics i'm talking about here and things similar to it will give us this result Great. Well, we're going to take this as true. We can prove it. It's already been proven for us. We're going to use it and try to draw this conclusion right here. So let's see how that plays out, you guys. Um, there's a lot of stuff written here, so I'm going to end up erasing some of it, but we'll see how that, how that goes to actually make the proof work here. All right, so... Okay, um, well, they're asking us how we're going to play it. So let's, let's see exactly what you want to say on this thing. Uh, now, we already said a bunch of stuff. Let's see what we can say here. I guess we're, well, I mean, I'll tell you what. We're going to take this entire thing, kx minus omega t, and call it alpha. We're going to take this guy, kx minus omega t plus phi, and call it beta. kx minus omega t is alpha. 
Kx minus omega t plus phi is beta. We'll use that and kind of, and this is where it's going to be. Well, let me see. Uh, okay, forgive me, guy. I, I, I could just easily use alpha or beta on this. It's not going to amount to anything because the, I, I kind of just said it wrong. I use this one as alpha. I use this one as beta. Uh, it will work exactly correctly, because, but you'll get like a cosine of a negative number. The cosine of negative theta, cosine of negative theta is always the same as the cosine of positive theta. You're going to get a positive theta or a negative theta. Here, the addition ain't going to make any difference. So either way, you can call this guy alpha, you can call this guy beta. The way I did it in my notes is I called this guy alpha and I called that guy beta. Doesn't really matter. We're not going to really sweat it, but let me, let me kind of stay consistent with the notes. As I said, it doesn't matter, but let's, let's kind of look at it. We've got alpha is kx minus omega, kx minus omega t plus phi. And beta is kx minus omega t. Good enough for me. Uh, How does this play out? Let's just let's kind of do it. What you're going to do is, if you're going to take, I made alpha kind of like the big one. So when you go alpha minus beta, all of this, all of that minus this, all of that minus all of this, the kx minus omega t leaves, and you have phi. You have 1 half phi, 2 cosine 1 half phi. You got that much right there. So that's what you would have if you added the two. So add the two. Two cosine. We said this is alpha, that's beta. Subtract from alpha this beta. This, take away that from it, it's gone. You got the phi. It's 1 half phi. Cosine 1 half phi. Let me just kind of speak their language here. Let me just make sure I'm speaking the language that everybody's going to understand because I, I want to use what they're doing. And I mean, there's so many parentheses and brackets you can put everywhere. You almost have to opt out of it as long as you know what's going on, as long as you're agreeing to what's happening. Uh, sign of this, what's going on here? You got alpha, you got beta. You got this, you got that. Add them together and divide by two. Add them together and multiply by a half. You got kx minus omega t plus kx minus omega t is two times the quantity kx minus omega t. Uh, the phi is with it. The, the phi comes down too. So you got two. At the end of the day, you got alpha plus beta equals two times the quantity kx minus omega t plus phi. Great. Why don't you multiply that quantity by a half? Multiply two times the quantity kx minus omega t by a half. You got kx minus omega t. Multiply phi by a half. You got phi over 2. So what you get, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, absolutely true. Um, yeah, OK, it's true enough. Yeah, it sounds pretty true to me. Oh yeah, there's there's one little thing where yeah that's that's true when you do this. Uh, this would be true if it was just sine kx minus omega t and sine kx minus omega t plus phi. There's a y max in front of both of them. There's a y max in front of both of them. Uh, let me see here. There's a y max in front of both of them. It stays. It stays. It stays. Well, there it is. This guy is the lead term. He is the amplitude. This will oscillate. 
as the sine function always oscillates. It'll hit all values between negative one and positive one inclusive in all, throughout the course of the oscillations. The sine function oscillates and you get negative one, you get on the low end, the very lowest number you're gonna get is negative one, the very highest number you can get is positive one, and everything in between, it'll oscillate between all of those values indefinitely. As it does so, if it's a negative, ne if this is negative, let's say, negative times negative is positive, so the absolute value. So this would be the absolute value. Look at it, two y max cosine, two y max cosine, phi over two, or one half phi, doesn't matter. Uh, two y max cosine, one half phi, which is the same as two y max cosine, phi over two. A half times phi or phi over two is the same thing. This is the other sine of the quantity kx minus omega t plus phi over two. That one's that one. Let's, I mean, what the heck, guys? Forgive me for, I don't want to nickel and dime you on this, but in case, one half, the one half phi in an issue. One half phi is phi over two. Since the sine function oscillates between plus and minus, uh, the constant, this right here, will give you the amplitude. And that's simple as that. If, if uh, and that, that was A, that's it. That's the end of the day, guys. It goes this, it looks like everything here. When they say B, they're asking you what will happen. If I could find the B, there it is. What is the amplitude of phi equals zero? If phi equals pi over two, if phi equals pi? Ain't a big deal, guys. Phi equals zero radians implies something. Uh, phi equals pi over two radians once again implies something. And phi equals pi implies something. If phi equals zero, put a zero right here. If phi, if phi equals zero, what is, now they're saying for the amplitude now, we, we just want, this could be a negative number, you guys, but that's not a big deal. This will oscillate to negative values, so negative times negative will still be a positive answer. So that's why they say the absolute value of this is where the amplitude, they do it to cover themselves. It could be, the stuff inside could be negative. Yeah, but eventually a negative times a negative is positive. I can get a negative value over here. I will reach an amplitude. I will have it oscillate between plus or minus the amplitude. Put an absolute value in there and you're okay. Um, phi equals zero, okay, put a phi equals zero right here. What's zero divided by two? It's zero. The cosine of zero is one. Two y max. or the absolute value thereof. Pi over two. Pi over two divided by two is pi over four. Pi over four is, is a 45 degree angle in degrees. The cosine of a 45 degree angle is one over the square root of two. Um, the cosine of a 45 degree, the, the cosine of pi over four. Pi over two divided by two is pi over four. The cosine of pi over four radians is one over the square root of two. One over the square root of two times two. One over the one over the square root of two times two is the square root of two. Square root of two y max. Oh, this lowers the amplitude, doesn't it? From two to square root of, from two y max to square root of two y max. What about this one? Pi divided by two. Pi divided by two is the cosine of 90 degrees. Pi over two is 90 degrees. The cosine of 90 degrees is zero. There is no amplitude here. This thing brings it right down. And there you go, that's A and B, you guys. I've got it in the notes as well. It's, I, I, I think, I hope it's, I think it's pretty straightforward when we do that, okay? Let's take a look at Take a look at 16. All right, there's, there's a lot being said uh, for 16. 
So we're ready for it. We can, we can handle it. Let's see what we got. All right, guys. They, it's kind of a, a, a little bit of a, of a long question there, but we can handle it here. Let me try to figure out how we're going to say this. The, be, the best access, guys, to this is having access to the book one way or the other. You should be able to have that. If you already have this associated with WebAssign, uh, there are ways, um, obviously ways to acquire the book, you know, when we're doing a lot of the stuff that we're doing here. Um, if you want it for your personal enrichment. It's not required. I got enough notes for the people in the 120 that you don't need this. But, I mean, sometimes people like to have the... Uh, um, as much practice provided as possible. It is certainly not required, though, as I've said. For the 209 people, know this stuff. Obviously, know it. Um, and for the 120 people, know it from other stuff that I've discussed with you to help you out in doing it. Uh, problem number 16 from the Cats book, chapter 18. For problem number 16, there is an oscillator. A simple harmonic oscillator is attached to a rope of linear mass density 5.4 times 10 to the negative 2 kilograms per meters. Creating a, standing trans, uh, creating a standing transverse wave. There is a 3.6 kilogram block hanging from the other end of the rope over a pulley. The oscillator has an angular frequency of 43.2 radians per second and an amplitude of 24.6 centimeters. 24.6 centimeters, guys, is 0.246 meters. A, B, C, D. A, what is the distance between the adjacent nodes? B, if the angular frequency of the oscillator doubles, what happens to the distance between the adjacent nodes? C, if the mass of the block is doubled instead, what happens to the distance between the adjacent nodes? D, if the amplitude of the oscillator is doubled, what happens to the distance between adjacent nodes? So they're asking, uh, what is the distance between adjacent nodes and what happens to the adjacent nodes if you start changing the angular frequency, you double it? Or if the mass of the block is doubled instead? Or if the amplitude of the oscillator is doubled, what happens? All what happens to the adjacent nodes, A, B, C, D on that. Let me, uh, let me draw, let's, let's look at it, let's draw it a little bit. Uh, like I said, those of you who don't have the book, if you're not in this, the, 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 physics, uh, the physics 209 calculus-based calculus -based version of the class, you can still just see from the drawing that I'm doing what to do as well. And or also acquire the book. But, uh, all, but like, you can see a lot of this stuff, uh, independent of that, I think, when we do this, okay? So let's look at 16. Let's look at what they're trying to say and what our argument is uh, to actually solve this for everybody. So let's take a look at it. Basically, they're, they're saying it sets up a standing wave consistent with the conditions that have outlined in the past. Um, so you got this standing wave, and then you wonder to yourself, okay, well, what, uh, what conclusions can be drawn given that it's a standing wave? What do we know? And what can we say? Well, kind of draw it the way they got it, make, make it kind of easy for everybody if you don't have the book handy, maybe help you out that way, I guess. Um, all right, guys, let me just check everything here. If I can be heard, I think I can. All right, very good. Um, I'm always checking what I'm doing here, guys. I'm, I'm obviously getting filmed on this whole process. Uh, they are saying... There is, there is me not drawing something too good right now, but let me, let me see if I can. Uh, there's a simple harmonic oscillator. There's some machine here. Some machine. I'm not going to draw it the way they drew it better than I did, but 
Um, see if I can. There's a mass M right here. They're telling us this mass is 3.6 kilograms initially. And then they do a whole bunch of monkey business at the end of that. Um, so this is, again, I can't stand the way I just drew that, guys. Uh, but let me... Yeah, let me just let me just do it one more time, guys. Let me make this thing a little bit lower. Yeah, it's gonna look a little bit better, I think. Um, there we go. We got this. We got the mass here, M. That's the 3.6 kilograms you're talking about. There's some machine here. Uh, it's gonna make this thing oscillate. Um, like that and then this guy okay a little bit better not great but it's it's basically oscillate it's a it's a standing wave they said here creating a standing transverse wave so it's creating a standing transverse wave um, the linear mass density they're you know, some things they don't change on this thing. So the linear mass density is 5.4 times 10 to the negative 2 kilograms per meter. Five point four times ten to the negative five point four times ten to the negative two kilograms per meter. Uh, the block is three point six initially. Uh, they're saying again they're going to change they're going to change this stuff up on us a little bit when they do. But here's the initial initial circumstances I guess you could say. Uh, you you kind of debate writing it down or not writing it down. You kind of want to stay symbolic with this stuff. I'm going to stay symbolic as possible. The oscillator has an angular frequency of 43.2 radians per second. Uh, and the amplitude, A equals Y max. I see what, I'm going to kind of cover all my bases. A and Y max are the same thing, you guys. Um, they say that's 24.6 centimeters, which is the same as 0.2446 meters. Um, I think we're pretty good. I'm getting that again. This is the ABCD going on all about the nodes. So let's see what we can say here. We know you guys. We know that mu, the linear mass density, is the rope, is the density of the rope, I'm sorry, it's the density of the rope pertaining to the length of the rope. In other words, I'm not even saying this right. That M is not the same M as this. That's why it's a little, you can argue that a bunch of ways here. Maybe, you know, it could, you could, maybe a capital M over there. Something. This is not this M, but it's the mass of the rope. It's the mass of the rope. The mass of the rope divided by the length of the rope is the linear mass density of the rope. Uh, the speed of propagation along that rope is directly proportional to the square root of the tension in the rope divided by the linear mass density. We also have kicked around a number of things here. We said Fn is N V over 2L. Well, that's the whole length of the rope. And that's, that gives us the harmonics. Okay. 
So we talked about all that stuff, you guys. We've said it. We've uh, seen it. Absolutely. And we got this. Like I said, maybe a capital M will be better on that one because it's different from that M right there, okay? Please be aware of that. What does it mean? Well, we've already kind of said this, guys. If there's a lot of tension in the rope and there's not a lot of linear mass density, a big number divided by a small number is a huge answer. A lot of speed. If there's not a lot of tension and the rope is really, really heavy, it's got a big linear mass density, small divided by big is a small answer, not a lot of speed. If you want the speed of propagation of what goes on on that rope uh, to be fast, put a lot of tension on the rope, have a strong string that doesn't weigh a lot, that doesn't have a lot of mass. Something that's not very massive, oscillate, you know, so if there's a great tension in the rope, a great amount of tension in the rope, it's a strong rope, there's not a lot, it's a very strong rope, and there's a lot of tension on that very strong rope, and the rope itself is not very heavy. It's not, it does not have a big linear mass density, then big tension divided by small linear mass density is going to be a big answer for V. You can tinker with the T and the mu and find out what you want to find out. I mean, these, how these three items relate to one another, I, basically the equation tells us. Okay. Um, there's a lot to talk about here. Here's one thing to talk about. How many, uh, what well, we said, guys, I mean, how, what, what's going on with this thing? I mean, we got, got this, got that, it reflects, it comes back here, it's doing this. So we got all this going on. It's a standing wave. All this business is going on. How many nodes are there? Again, assume I knew how to draw and these are all symmetric. How many mountains are on top? Three of them, huh? So it'll be, F, it'll be associated with the number three. N will be, remember what we said, we had N equals one for that one mountain. N equals two for the two mountains and N equals three for the three mountains. So we'll say for each one of these buds, how many, you know, there, there was one big bud, that's N equals one. Two buds, that was N equals two. Here there's one, two, three, three buds, N is gonna be equal to three. All right, well we need to know a lot. Um, different things get said. I mean, the way I wrote the notes here, I'm not, I'm not, I'm less than thrilled sometimes. Uh, but that's not a big deal. The way that, it, as long as you're comfortable with the language that's going to be used, you should be okay. Well, let's see how fast this thing's going. Nobody asked us, but what the heck? Let's ask. The speed is constant. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many mountains are present. It doesn't matter how many buds are present. The wavelength and frequency are inversely related to each other, but when you multiply wavelength times frequency, you'll get the speed of the wave and it's always the same, no matter what n is. No matter how many buds are there, uh, how many or how few, or doesn't matter. If there's a few buds, it's a long wavelength, not a lot of frequency. If there's a lot of buds there, that's a short wavelength, short wavelength means a big frequency to keep the same speed v. The speed v is gonna be the same no matter what you do. So look, without further ado, guys, let's just deal with it. What's the tension in this thing? Uh, can I talk to you about that a little bit? Uh, we can say, I just don't like, you know, I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I can argue this a whole bunch of ways here. Let me, since I used M right there, let me stay consistent with my notes. Let me go against what the book did and write a capital M here. Please let me do that because that's consistent with the notes I got written down. It's not a big deal. I don't think it's gonna be, anybody's going to throw a fit on this. The small m is the mass of the rope. The entire mass of the rope is small m. Big m is the weight. What is going on with this weight, you guys? Uh, what's going on with this weight is that the weight does all the tension. The weight pulls straight down, and that's the guy giving all the tension. It's the guy giving all the tension here. It's mg. It's mg. What does that mean? Well, that means it's 3.6 in this case times 9.81. That's going to change now later on, but for now, this is it's the mass they put on there. 3.6 times 9.81. 3.6 times 9.81 is the tension. And this is mu. So that's Q 
capital MG divided by mu. And that's going to be 3.6. That's going to be 3.6 times 9.81. That's going to be 35.316 newtons. That's the tension putting on there. It's attached over here, and this guy, bam, yanks down, and that's the tension in the rope. 35.316 newtons. Mu, they told us, you guys, was 5.4 times 10 to the negative 2. Yeah, 5.4 times 10 to the negative 2. Okay. Uh, yeah, go for it. I mean, just take the, take the whole thing out and let's see what's, what's going on here. This is the speed of propagation of the wave. 25.5, 25.573 meters per second. If they asked you that, then they could. It's a valid question. There's how you get the answer. What's the frequency? Frequency's right here. Frequency's right here. The frequency, this is of interest. I mean, this is very, very important, actually. Uh, let's, let's talk. Frequency is this guy right here. The N is 3. There's 1, 2, 3, three of those buds. So the N is 3. So what you got here is, F sub 3 sounds good to me um, see what they say I'm, I'm okay uh, I'm trying to figure out exactly where I wanted to go with this because I could have sworn there was we, we've got to figure out what's happening there and the way to figure it out there's got to be for the rope now let's let's actually see this um, a lot you can say here yeah this is this is a true story but let's go about it a little different way maybe make our life a little bit easier um, let's talk is this true that lambda sub n times f sub n lambda sub n times f sub n is equal to v Lambda sub 3 times F sub 3 is equal to V. True. Um, I could say a couple things here for some reason. Uh huh, uh huh. Was just, it was escaping me, guys. This guy right here gets us out of the woods. That guy right there gets us out of the woods. Omega is 2 pi times f. Omega, omega is 2 pi times f. f is equal to omega divided by 2 pi. f equals 43.2. Divided by the product 2 pi. This f, ladies and gentlemen, is f sub 3. Why? Because these, this was given to us. Those three things there, 
Those three nodes tell us that's F sub 3. That's the big one. That gets us there. That gets us there, and that gets us through a lot. Um, F sub 3 is what the F is going to be. And when you do this division, ladies and gentlemen, 43.2 divided by the product, divided by the product of 2 pi. So um, 43.2 divided by the product of 2 pi, you get F3, F3 equals F, 43.2 divided by the product of 2 pi, uh, the product of 2 and pi, rather, uh, is going to be 6.8. 6.875 hertz. They're still not asking that, but we did it anyway. All right, they're not asking us a lot of stuff. We found they didn't ask us V, they didn't ask us F, but yeah, we kind of need it. Because now we're going to use that right here to find lambda sub 3. Lambda sub 3 is going to equal V over F sub 3. Lambda sub 3 is going to equal 25.573 divided by 6.8755 and Pretty interesting stuff. That's going to be 3.72 meters. You're still not done. That's the wavelength. What's the wavelength, guys? The wavelength is from here to here. Here we go. Cycle it all the way up, all the way down, back to where you started. That's a wavelength. That's two-thirds of the whole distance L. This is L. So we can go, hey, how long is the distance L? How long is the rope? How long is the distance L? How long, and we'll say the rope, we'll say that, that displacement is, we're not going to worry about this. We're not going to worry about that length right here being a whole lot longer than this right here. This is two two thirds of L is equal L is equal to three halves. In other words, if you take the wavelength times three halves, here's a wavelength. Take the wavelength, divide it by two. You got the length of this guy, and you got the length of this guy, and you got length of that. It's three halves. I, you know, how, 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 how much into this are we going to get, you know? L is equal to lambda sub 3 over 2. Each half of those is one of the buds. There's three of them. L equals 3 halves times lambda sub 3. Well, nobody asked you. You know, nobody asked you, but there it is. They did ask you. What's the, diff what's the distance between the nodes? If this whole thing right here, from here to here, from here to here is lambda, that distance is half of lambda, that's half of lambda, that's half of lambda. What's lambda over 2 plus lambda over 2 plus lambda over 2? Yeah, I guess it is. L lambda over 2 multiplied by 3 is 3 halves lambda. True. Half the lambda will be the distance between the nodes. Half the lambda, you guys, is going to be the distance between the nodes. So what does that mean? Well, it means a lot of stuff. Let me just see here. OK. Um, the distance between the nodes, ladies and gentlemen, is d. It's going to be lambda over 3 divided by 2. The D is going to be 3.72. That's lambda. That's lambda sub 3. Lambda sub 3 divided by 
Lambda sub 3 divided by 2 is 3.72 divided by, and that's going to be 1.86. 3.72 divided by 2 is 1.86 meters. Well, sorry I had to deliver a whole speech to get you there. D is equal to that. One point eight six, one point eight six meters is that. That's A. That's A. What happens? You know, okay, that's, that's A. That's A. What is the distance between adjacent nodes? If the angular frequency of the oscillator doubles, what happens to the distance between adjacent nodes? This is crazy. It ain't going to look like this. Is to, uh, to make a long story short, it's going to have this sort of structure to it, but it's not going to have it's not going to have three uh, it's not going to have three bulked up items like this. It may have five bulked up items, six bulked up items, seven, eight. I don't know. Or it might just have two. It might just have one. I don't know. But it's going to have this general look to it, but it's going to be a little different dynamic. How many nodes are going to be present? Well, I mean, I can tell you, you know, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to beat this thing to the ground too much, you guys. But if you take, if you take this, the length under consideration. Nobody asked you this that I'm about to say, but let's talk about it a bit. Didn't I tell you that the L? that the length of the rope or the length of the countertop, the length of the countertop here, capital L, is going to be 3 halves lambda 3. It's going to be 3 halves, which is 1.5, times lambda 3, which is going to be, it's going to be 1 and a, one and a half times that. So you add you do this, you're going to get 5.58 5 5 meters. Nobody asked you. Nobody asked you, but 5 point... Nobody asked you. Let's make sure, make, make sure I don't talk any garbage here either, guys. Um, four, yeah, it's going to be 5 point, uh, 5.58 meters. That's L. Okay, interesting. That's L, huh? There's three nodes. What would happen if you divided 5.58? What would happen if you divided 5.58 meters by three? What if you divided the L, the big length L, capital L, which is 5.58, divide it by three? Divide it by three, I'll get that length, I'll get that length, and I'll get that length. Oh yeah, by the way, that's the distance between the nodes. That's one, if you divide 5.58, Divide 5.58 by 3, you get 1.86. At 5.58. Ah, keep it in mind. So let's see here. Let's see what they're talking about here. We see all this stuff. Let me kind of get it out of the way. I mean, you, you see it, you got it. You can always reverse the film on this, guys. That's one advantage uh, to it. <coughs> let's see what we can say. My argument with you is things might remain exactly the same or they may not. There may be more nodes. There were, there were three bulbs there, three mountains there. Three hill, there were three hills in this scenario. In the other scenario, there may be more hills. There may be less hills. There may be the same. We already kind of know what the benchmarks are in this thing. That 5.58, the whole thing, and I think you'll see.
If the angular frequency of the oscillator doubles, what happens to the distance between adjacent nodes? Fair enough to me. If it doubles. Now again, we said for A, the distance between adjacent nodes was 1.86. Saw that. For B, you want to double it? Isn't, it, isn't omega, generally speaking, omega equals 2 pi f? If you double the angular frequency, ladies and gentlemen, only the, if you double the angular frequency, the regular frequency has got to be doubled. There's no other way around it. This ain't a variable. It ain't going to change. Only this guy can vary. You double omega, you're doubling f. It's as simple as that. Uh, okay, then you doubled f more than it was before. f is directly proportional to omega. Um, well, that's, that's of interest. We have said that fn is n v over 2l. Yeah, the 2l, the, the l was the 5.58. If you double it, you get 11.16. Okay, I don't want to, we're not going to go there. We're not, we don't need to go there. And doubling omega doubles f sub n. If you double omega, you're doubling f sub n. So if you, if you, double, if you double omega, you double the frequency. So what do you got? Well, what you got is you got... Well, I mean, there's a lot here. I mean, let's, let's, let's see what they want to say here on this one. Um, okay, my issue with this is, well, whatever. There's a lot of ways to say this. I, I don't want to just, I don't want to cavalierly just throw this by you. This is true. This is just it's plain and simple. It's true. Uh, you're basically taking, in the new scenario, what would have been the case before is now different. If this was the case earlier for any n, the frequency is doubled for that same n. So here they're not changing the n on us. So maybe I was jumping the gun a little bit on that one. Um, let's see what I can say here. I just want to say that I don't want to throw anybody off here. I, I'm, I'm relatively comfortable with this. Doesn't mean entirely comfortable. Let me say, the explanation I want to be very comfortable with, that's for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, this is true. So I just want to say something about it. For, it. This is generally true, and I don't like to I don't like to alter general equations. This is like very, very, very true. It's always true. What the heck just happened? Well, Malus, there was an N. There was there was an what was the N? The N was three earlier. If I double the frequency of what was going on initially, you've made the frequency. See, the, the speed of the wave ain't changing, guys. This guy right here ain't changing, at least not here. Why is it not changing here? Because the only thing that I altered, the only thing that I altered, ladies and gentlemen, was omega. If I alter omega, then f changes directly. If you make omega half as big as what it was initially, then f is half as big as what it was initially. If you double omega, f doubles, period. This new frequency under consideration is something different. But the, the velocity of the wave, ladies and gentlemen, how come that doesn't change? Because the weight that you have hanging on this thing the weight that you have hanging on this thing does not change, nor does the rope change. It's the same rope, it's the same rope with the same linear mass density, mu, and it's the same weight hanging from the rope. You just happen to make the oscillator move twice the velocity, twice the angular velocity. If the angular frequency, call it angular velocity, I can also call it that too, I guess. But angular frequency is a better way to call it in this instance. Omega, it's the same omega that we've talked about in the past. We call it angular velocity. Omega, the angular frequency, we'll call it though, and the frequency, which is f, are directly proportional to each other. f is just something which is numerically 2 pi times smaller than omega. But if you make omega 10 times bigger, f gets 10 times bigger than it was before. It's as simple as that. 
Um, this doesn't change. So let me see how I want to talk about it. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not, I don't like, I don't know how I want to say this actually. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm going to leave it like this. I'm going, to, I'm going to go with my notes. I don't like my notes though, to be honest with you. Let me, let's work with this. Um, let me leave it like this. Let me leave it like this for now. And just trying to, I'm trying to argue here what the heck happened with this thing. All right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, I am going to go, I'm going to solve for, uh, let's flip. If these two things are equal, let's get the reciprocal of each one. I still don't like that. I, I, I should probably just call it a generic F because it's a different, it's not the three. But okay, I'm still going to let it go. Um, flip the other one. The two L, let me put the L, let me put the N underneath that. Um, I flip it and then put the V right here. Let me multiply by V on each side. True. Um, This right here is V over Fn divided by 2. That's what that is. This is 2L divided by N, which is the frequency from way back. The frequency of the, I, 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 which is the, the wavelength of the standing wave. That's the wavelength of the standing wave. Well, um, this was going on earlier when there was a 3 down here. There was a wavelength associated with him. And this new wavelength, lambda, this is lambda, is going to be what the original wavelength was divided by 2 which is going to be equal to, the wavelength is cut in half, so the distance d between the nodes is also cut in half. The wavelength is cut in half. That's the new wavelength. If the wavelength is cut in half, the, dis the, the distance between the nodes is lambda divided by 2 is 1.86 divided by 2 is 0 0.93 0 0.93 meters well they don't really tell you something that I believe that they should have told you or at least you know, we can argue what, what just happened here I'll tell you what just happened. At the end of the day, the distance between the nodes is half of what it was. Yeah, but what are the consequences of that happening? That means the nodes have shrunk, but they still comprise the entire length, capital L. If they've shrunk to half the size of what they... The, if each node is half the size of what it used to be, each node is half the size of what it used to be, but they all still fill up the distance from 0 to L, there's got to be double the number of nodes. This is F, not F sub 3 anymore. It's F sub 6. six. It's lambda sub 6. This is actually, in this whole song and dance, 
It's lambda sub 6 divided by 2 is d. And that's the 0.93. There is no way you're going to go. Uh, this, this drawing gets, gets worse every time I try it, guys. You're not doing three of these anymore. You're doing one, two, three, four, five, six, something like that. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. No wonder it didn't look so good. I got drew seven. In them. You guys know where I'm going there. They don't talk about it. They don't talk about it. And that's why I just I felt really awkward with this thing. Yeah, this is true mathematically. It just turns out this guy right here is F sub F sub 2n. I don't want to go there. I don't want to open up that can of worms. F sub 2n means it's F sub 2 times 3, which is F sub 6. It's lambda sub 6, not lambda sub 3. It's F sub 6, not F sub 3. Let's not go there too much, but let's go there a little bit. Um, Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, there's six of them. This is what it used to be, guys. 1.86 plus 1.86. 1 1.86 plus 1.86 plus 1.86 is 5.58. Yes, and it's still 5.58 for L. If you double it, 5.58 doubled is 11.16 for the 2L. 11.16 divided by 11.16 divided by 6 is 1.86 for the lambda. And half of that is this guy. This is 1.86, that's 1.86, that's 1.86. What's half of 1.86? Here's your 0.93 meters. This is how the argument proceeds for A and B, you guys. That's kind of how they're, they don't, I, I'm not trying to play it like I know too much because I don't. But I am saying, and, and there's only so much they can tell you in a book. They told you everything and wrote out every question with every different scenario and every different potential misunderstanding there and didn't rely on, on us to use Occam's razor to, to use the simplest assumption. They weren't relying for, on all these assumptions that we got to make sometimes. The book wouldn't be this thick. It would be that thick. You know, it's, there's, you, you, you kind of run out of room sometimes. They, they, just, they run out of things that they can say sometimes too. But this is very important. It does get, need to get mentioned at least. Okay, uh, And it's not they did or did not mention it. It's not a big deal. Uh, as the person trying to teach this class, I need to at least mention it to you. It's nothing profound. They know how to do that, and they've probably done this in, in numerous circumstances, perhaps even in here, and I've not seen it. But it's, it's all understood. It, it, in fact, they have done that in here. They have done it. It's already implied on the stuff that we've already talked about. Still, notice, it's not, it's, it's not three of those. It's now six nodes. If it's six nodes, the lambda is half as big as what it was before. What's half as big as 3.72 meters? 1.86 meters is the new lambda. Okay, what's half of that lambda to give you each, each bulb, each, each one of those bulbs, each one of those little mountains? You gotta go half of that lambda. Well, half of 1.86 is 0.93. And that's, this is how it's arguing here, you guys. So let me kind of do that. Let me do that here. Um, All right, so let's see. So these are the arguments they're making, guys. I got, I have this on Canvas. Um, for the Physics 209 people, so you'll see it as well. Um, so 
So what did we say here? So far, so good. Right? 16, the D was 1.86 meters. B, the D was 0.93 meters. C, what are they doing here? C, they're trying to pull a fast one on us. They're saying, what if I change? Now, finally, they're going to mess with the mass of the block, you guys. The mass of the block, they're doubling the mass of the block, which means if they, if the mass of the block is doubled instead, what happens to the distance between adjacent nodes? Not only is the distance from A to B, the distance between adjacent nodes is cut in half. That means there's twice as many nodes present. Or twice as, rather, twice as many half wavelengths are present. Uh, one was L3, one was L6. L6 is a part of six, uh, six half wavelengths that are a part of that, uh, in that regard. So let's, uh, six half wavelengths as opposed to three half wavelengths. So that's a big deal. If you double the mass, the mass of the block doubled means tension is doubled. So what's going on here? So for this one, you're going to double the tension? Yeah, I just if you double the mass, mg is going to be 2mg. 2mg is double the original tension. They didn't do anything to mu. When you keep going with this thing, what do you get? What's the new one? This is the new one now, right? Uh, this is going to be... Uh, the original, let's call it the new one. I, you know, I can say this a bunch of ways here. You can go square root of 2 times the square root of t over mu. Well, this is the original. So this new guy means, I don't know what the, what the, how to write this thing. I guess I could say, uh, I almost don't want to say anything on it, to be honest with you. I, I could call it... Uh, I'm not going to say anything about it, guys. Let's, let's just look at the original. This is the original speed. This is the new speed. Square root of 2 times the original speed. So, I mean, I could say the new speed, and I kept debating with myself whether to write it or not. The new speed, guys, So that's what they're saying here, guys. Uh, v nu that was the original. Square root of two times more, huh? That's a, that's a horse of a different color, you guys. Um, the new velocity is the square root of two times greater than previously. Remember now, as a general rule, I'm not saying what n is. I don't know what n is. You saw what had n changes. Here n was associated with three. Here n's associated with six. Okay? Uh, the, the number of, of bulbs that are there, I guess you could say. We do know 2L over n. Well, yeah, what, what is lambda equal anyway? Well, it's V over F sub N. I don't, I'm not sure I want to go down that path. They're not, we, I, I think, uh, well, I just think there's a lot we can say here. So let's, let's, let's go with it. Um, then V in this case is the square root of, is square root of two times V. Um, this, is a, this, is, this is generally a true statement. This is generally a true statement. Um, we got to figure this out. What, well, yeah, true, it is a true statement, but what, uh, what, what good is that doing me? Um, the V under consideration here, in this case, whatever it may be, I, I, maybe I should just write it. It's a little different than I wrote. The V nu. The V nu is going to be this. And what is that? 
Well, the V nu is 2L over N, 2L over N, which is equal to V nu. The V nu is square root of 2 times the old. The V nu is the square root of 2 times the old V. Okay. Um, lambda sub n is square root of 2 times larger. So the distance between nodes, d, is square root of 2 times larger. So this gets to be a little messy. I don't, I'm not thrilled with it. What is this? What is it? What the heck does this mean? It means the square root of 2 times v over fn. Wait a minute. v over fn we had earlier. This is going to be the square root of 2 times longer. So let me see here. I mean, there's a lot you got to say here, guys. Uh, I want to make sure they're saying this right. If the mass of the block is doubled instead, what happens to the distance between adjacent nodes? They didn't really say much beyond that. The mass of it's doubled. Um, yeah, it's going to be faster. True. Um, see, there's there's a, there's a lot they're doing here. I don't really. Uh, I, I I you could argue there's a lot of what if scenarios here that they're apparently. Here we go with Occam's razor again. I'm thinking I'm going to have to just go with Occam's razor and leave it. Um, you know, there, geez, there, there's, there's got to be something up here. What's allowed, what's not allowed. If you keep the distance as I had told you the distance is, there might be an issue. If you allowed the distance between the oscillator and the pulley, to increase proportionally, that would work. Uh, you would have double the tension, double the speed for the same for the same frequency of oscillate. You'd have to increase the length of the table for this to be a realistic scenario. I can't see how else this could be done. Uh, I'm just I'm just looking at it. I don't I don't think the numbers. Uh, the, the numbers don't allow you to play that game, guys. Uh, 5.58, uh, no, I just do not agree. Uh, it, you, it, this would work, but it'd have to be proportionally bigger. The length of the table would have to be the square root of... The length of the table would have to be increased. Where the pulley and the oscillator are, they would have to be separated not by a distance L, but by a distance square root of 2 times L. For this to work with the with the oscillations remaining as they are with Omega the same as it originally was with Omega with Omega the same as it originally was which was you know what whatever it was um, with Omega being 43.2 radians per second and the amplitude being the 24.6 centimeters we haven't even gotten into that yet uh, the, the length of the table, the length, the, the distance from the oscillator to the pulley over which the rope hangs and it's being attached to a mass, from edge, to, from edge of the table to edge of the table, from the oscillator to the pulley, we said was 5.58. That was the little extra we did. We didn't have to do it. 5.58. That's L. Uh, 2L would be double that, would be 11.16. Okay, great. So what? Let's go with the L, the length of the table. That big L I wrote earlier, you can go back in, on the film and look at it. That L being 5.58, it would have to be 5. Point, the new L would have to be 5.58 times the square root of 2 for those three nodes to fit in there. But they would fit. Uh, you would just need a bigger table for it to work. And each wavelength, and this is the wavelength right here. Uh, this is equal to lambda sub 
N or whatever. You know, Lambda sub N nu. This is really going to look ridiculous, guys. I'm sorry. Lambda sub N and then nu would have to be the original lambda sub n times the square root of 2. And that works. That works, but the table would have to be bigger. The, pa the table would have to be bigger for that to work. Uh, for it to have the three nodes on there, for that greater speed at that oscillation frequency, since the oscillation frequency doesn't change, the only way you get greater speed, greater speed, which is the square root of, uh, which is the square root of two times what the original speed was, means you got to cover the square root of two times the distance that the original one covered. So the new length of the table would have to be the square root of two times l. They don't tell you that, and because again, it's easy for me to say it, but to write that stuff is is, is something pretty tough. But that's what has to happen. Well, that's important. It, it would be lambda 3 nu, lambda 3 nu would be whatever the, the original lambda 3 was times the square root of 2, which is equal to, uh, you know, whatever that is. And then you'd, you'd, take, you'd take that and divide it by 2. Um, and then so the d d new would be the d you know the d3 new I you know I get guys forgive the subscripts here when you see me in person you're gonna want to punch me in the face I get it but I've uh, got d3 new and you got d3 here uh, it's going to be whatever this guy was times the square root of 2 at the end of all that and that's going to be 1.86 times the square root of 2 Uh, 1.86 times square root of 2. Yeah, this is a mess. Um, the D3 new, please, let's just call it D at this point. Let's just call it D at this point. Is 2.63 meters. Yeah. If you multiply that by 3, you're going to get the length of the table. Yeah, whatever that is, right? I mean, that's going to be about in the ballpark of uh, 7.89. 7.89 is the square root of 2 times 5.58. About. I'm just kind of doing this on the fly, you guys. But that's, for it to fit, you got to lengthen the table. Why do you got to lengthen the table by the square root of 2, by a factor of the square root of 2? Because the velocity is moving faster to a new amount, which is equal to the square root of 2 times the old amount. So the table's got to be the square root of 2 times the old table's length. It's got to be square root of 2 times the length of the original table because the, velo the new velocity is the square root of 2. New length of table has got to be square root of 2 times the old length table because the new velocity is the square root of 2 times the old velocity. And if the frequency of oscillation hasn't changed, then the wavelength has got to be that much bigger. But the wavelengths got to match up so they reflect back and forth for a standing wave. So the only way they can match up like that is if you lengthen the table. Neat stuff. Really neat stuff. Um, 16. If the amplitude of the oscillator is doubled, what happens to the distance between adjacent nodes? That's an easy one. In this long-winded conversation here, that's a pretty easy one. Nothing. There is more energy in the wave and more power is transported according to... Uh, Two point six three meters for that level C. For D, we said nothing. Nothing. Now let's we we do got to talk on that one. Nothing, but the average power does increase. P 
power average is one half, one half mu, those are all constants. Omega, we're assuming, is constant at least in the two scenarios. Within the two scenarios, we haven't changed omega. But you doubled the amplitude. If you double the amplitude, if you square, if you square something doubled, it increases to four times the amount it was before. If you double this guy, if you double what's inside of the argument here, if you double y max, if you double the amplitude, when you square double the amplitude, you got four times the amount of what you had earlier. More power is transported But nothing else, according to that equation. There's more energy in the wave and more power is transported according to this that we talked about. But that's it. But the wavelength is independent of amplitude. The wavelength would not change. But the wavelength is independent of amplitude. D distance between nodes remains unchanged. Rather interesting. Theoretically, that's possible. Okay. That is a great problem, you guys. And its nuances are, are even more fascinating as far as I'm concerned. Uh, let's talk about 19. All right, guys, 19. Nineteen is saying a standing transverse wave on a string of length 60 centimeters is represented by an equation. I'm going to write it down for you. Where x and y are in centimeters and t is in seconds. Okay, everybody's, everybody's in centimeters here. Okay, we can play that game, guys. As long as they're consistent, we can be, we can be consistent too. A, B, C on that one. What is the max for A? What is the maximum value of the standing? What is the maximum value of the standing wave at the point x equals five centimeters? B. Where are the nodes located along the string for this particular standing wave? C. What is the vertical velocity v y of the string at x equals seven point five meters when t equals 0.25 seconds? Okay, they're throwing a bunch of stuff at us there, guys. We can do it though. Okay, they told us a bunch of stuff, so let's let's us agree with it at least and figure out where we are. Um, we know Okay, they gave us they gave us this in the book, guys. They got them kind of separated there, which makes sense. It's looking like this, and it's looking like this. They didn't really show it like that. I, I kind of bunched them up like that just to maybe hopefully make it a little easier to look at, I guess. Um, they are telling us a number of things. They are saying that L L is 60 centimeters.
pi over 15. Ninety six pi. OK, so they got uh, let's I mean, they gave us a lot and we can we can infer a lot. What are you what are you talking about? Well, anything associated with the X in a multiplicative fashion is going to be the K. So you got pi over 15 pi over 15 for the K. Anything associated with the T is going to be associated with omega. Ninety six pi is the omega. Um, and that's, you know, appropriate units and everything else. OK. If that is the case, they are asking here what would happen for A. For A, they're saying what is, what would happen when X, if X was equal, now they, they gave everything in terms of centimeters, so we're okay. We don't need to make conversions here, guys, because they've got it all scaled to centimeters and seconds and everything else, so we should be all right. Uh, Look at it. I mean, we, we, it's, this is kind of the, just the way it's going to go. I mean, again, anything associated with the x in a multiplicative fashion in these kind of equations is going to be the k. So pi over 15 times x, that works. And 96 pi times t, 96 pi is the omega. OK, got everything straight. Let me ask the question. They are saying, uh, what does, what's the maximum value it could attain at a value of x equals 5? Uh, it's all centimeters, so just, just put the 5 in there. You don't need to convert it. Okay, Put a 5 right here. At 5 centimeters, what's the maximum value of y that can be attained? Well, i got to see what happens over here, and we'll cross that bridge if we got to cross it. Put a 5 right here for x. Put a 5 for x. What's 5 divided by 15? 5 over 15 is 1 third. This is pi over 3. Pi over 3 radians is the same as 60 degrees. The sine of 60 degrees is the square root of 2, is the square root of 3 over 2. And this is 4. So what happens is, guys, you do this, you get, that's the y, x comma t. Here's your 4, 4.0. The sine of pi over 3, we'll cross that bridge. I already kind of, I just said it, but let's, let's keep crossing the bridge. Um, cosine. Okay, so what do we got here? We said that the sine of pi over 2 is the square root of 3 over 2. The 4 is right here. We'll cross that bridge as we need to cross it. Um, 96 pi t. Two goes into four. I don't we don't need to deliver too many speeches here, guys, and some of this stuff. 2 goes into 4 twice. You got the square root of 2 right here, square root of 3 rather. Square root of 3 times the cosine. Okay, now what? Well, this guy's going to determine the max. The biggest value that the cosine can ever have is 1. The smallest value is negative 1. In terms of absolute value, the biggest absolute value is 1. The smallest absolute value is 0. So they're asking here what would happen. If this guy somewhere, somewhere hit the value of 1, where would that be? Uh, at, at t equals 0, that's for sure. But in other places, it can hit it too. But it's a little bit of a drawn out process. Not too hard, but you just got to, every time you get pi, you're going to get 1. Every, every, time, every time you got at at theta, at the whole theta being equal to 0, or pi, or 2 pi, uh, well, you can get, you get negative numbers, too. Um, every, uh, let me just try to, I'm tr try to think a little bit about that. Pi, yeah, 2 pi. Every 2 pi, it's going to happen. Well, how many times does this go into here? Wow, 48. 48 cycles right here, man. Uh, every, there's 48 cycles right there, each one with 2 pi. 48 times 2 pi is 96 pi. So at 0, uh, at a fraction of that, uh, what would happen is 0, 
one forty eighth of a second. Um, how many times does four go into here, guys? Let me try, kind of look at it. Twenty four times. Um, twenty four. Um, these are seconds. Let me see. So at zero, it would work. At one over forty eight, really? Seconds now, right? These are all seconds. Seconds, 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 etc. Right? Um, one forty eight. You know, zero times this is zero. Cosine of zero is zero. One forty eighth times ninety six pi is two pi. The cosine of two pi is one. The cosine of 4 pi, that's when you go 1 24th. 1 24th of this is 4 pi. The cosine of 6 pi, what's going on here? Um, is that true? Let me just, let's make sure it's true. Yeah, okay, it'll work. 4, so let's see here. You got, you got, two, you got 0, you got 2 pi, because... 0 is 0, multiply 0, 0 times this is 0, 1 48th times this is 2 pi, 1 24th times this is 4 pi, 1 16th times that is 6 pi, uh, 1 12th of this, is there a pattern here? Sure the heck looks like it. 24 between them, then 8 between them, then 4 between them, um, I just want to make sure I'm not losing one of them here. Yeah, I think it, it looks about right to me, man. Um, 4, 16, 12. Uh, that's 6 pi, right? The 12 goes into there how many times? 8 times. That'll work. Um, Keep going here. Um, eight goes in there. So let's see here. We got there's a whole bunch of these that are working. I'm probably, I hope I'm not missing a couple. I may have I may have even skipped a couple guys. The, the, the big the big moral to the story here, guys, is where this is going to happen. Well, they didn't really go there. My big thing is, can you get can you get this guy to be equal to one? If you do, the max value attained is this, which is equal to see I'm trying to go 2 pi, uh, 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi, uh, 1 over 9.6 uh, would be 10 pi I think you get the picture, guys. I'm, I'm not. I haven't really worked out the actual numbers, but that's that's. It's fine. I mean, right here it works, and that's good enough for us. Here's the approximation: 3.5 centimeters. 3.5 centimeters is the same as two times the square root of three centimeters for that. That's that one. Um, B. They're saying okay. B, they're saying, where are the nodes located along the string for this particular standing wave, and then what is the speed of it? Okay, so let's see what we can say here, guys. There's a lot, a lot to be said. Um, they gave the special scenario of the the A scenario, where they're saying if, if it's five centimeters, and we got all this business. Okay, we got all this. Um, Almost shouldn't have erased those, but let's see if we got it. We got enough data. We can, we can come right back to it at our, at our leisure, you guys. Um, let's see what we can do. B. I got, let's let's go back to the bread and butter, guys. We got four sine. Okay, this is definitely a standing wave pattern. Uh, 
All right, we've been there, done that. The way I did my notes, very, very similar to this. You want the nodes. The nodes are where the height is equal to zero. This, that right there, especially this, if the sine of pi x over 15 is equal to zero, you are solving it. If that, this, this guy right might get zero, might not. It depends on the times that are going on here. I get all that. This guy tells you where the nodes are. Where on earth you get nodes equal to zero? How about x equals zero? Zero times pi over 15 is zero. How about every time you get something that is like a multiple of pi? Zero, pi, two pi, three pi, etc. X equals zero. How do I get pi? How about x is 15? 15 over 15 is pi. How about x is 20? Uh, how about x is 30? How about x is 45, etc.? I think you get the picture, you guys. Does that work? It goes on. 60 divided by 15 is 4. 4 pi. Yeah, still going to be 0. Dot, dot, dot. 15 between them. Um, all in centimeters. All in centimeters, you guys. What is the speed? Now, those of you not, you know, in, in my 209 class, we got to know this. The 120 people, if you're watching this, you don't have to know this part. But, um, again, it's it, how much of a background you got in the calculus and stuff like that. It might be not, not much of a problem for you. Let's make a long story short. They want to know the vertical speed. Vy is the partial derivative. Vy is the partial derivative dy dt. It'd be nice if I knew how to write, guys. Hold on. Just I will get this right. And that is partial derivative of the whole song and dance. Sine. Go for it. Um, just a derivative with respect to time. This guy holds on. Here we go. What is the derivative of the cosine function? It's negative sine. And within, what is the derivative, right? I mean, a derivative. Of, what's the derivative of 96 pi times t with respect to t? It's 96 pi. So it's negative 96 pi sine 96 pi t. We kind of look at it here, guys. Yeah, that's true. Multiply negative 96 by positive 4. It's going to be negative 384. Negative 384. Let me bring the pi out in front too. Might as well. Since we're times the sine of pi x over 15 times the sine of There it is.
Yeah. Um, there it is. That's, that's a formula for it. Uh, let me see. What is the vertical velocity Vy of the string at x equals 7.5 centimeters when t is 0.25 seconds? So for this guy right here, Again, they told us to play the game with centimeters. Okay, we can play that game. As long as we're consistent and they're consistent, we're okay. In those circumstances, give me what this guy is. Give me what that is, which is really what this is. I mean, plug that stuff in there. Uh, <coughs> interesting. Let's go. Put 7.5 in for x. 7.5 divided by 15 7.5 over 15 is a half. A half times pi is the same as pi over 2. The sine of pi over 2 is 1. Great. That's 1. What happens over here? Here's the problem. It doesn't matter if that's 1. Put a 0.25 right here, guys. 0.25 is 1 fourth. 1 fourth of this is 24. 24 pi is 12 2 pies happening. Yeah, by the time you get to the 12 2 pi, you're still down on the ground. You're, you're still, it's, you know, the sign, it, it's the sign of zero is what it is. The sign of 24 pi is zero. Zero times one is zero times this is zero. At the end of the day, you guys, yeah, they gave us that elaborate song and dance, all of it just to get this for an answer at the end. Be y equals zero centimeters per second, and that's and that's that. So great problems, you guys. Great problems. Let's do sixty-five and sixty-six. All right, guys, they're, they're, they're kind of employing similar arguments that we've, you know, similar questions, similar arguments that we've seen in the past for 65 and 66. So let's see where it's going to play out. Let's see how it plays out. Uh, for problem number 65, the wave functions that they give, and I will, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll write them down for you, describe two sinusoidal waves traveling on the same string, where x, y1, and y2, where x, y1, and y2, are in meters and t's in seconds. What are the amplitude, frequency, and wavelength of the resultant wave, A, B, C? Okay, uh, let's look at that for 65. Let me erase these guys, give myself a little bit more room. Uh, so 65 and 66 is what's left to be done now. Well, basically, they're, they're saying, hey, let's, let's, let's talk, let's remember some stuff, uh, and let's, let's draw some conclusions based on the trigonometry that we already know. Uh, they are playing the game. Once again, we played that early on in the discussion, so this should not be any surprise to us. We've seen the stuff in prior discussions that I've initiated, and, and you've seen it as well. You've seen it in the book. And so we, we've basically seen all this stuff, guys. Um, this should look really familiar. We just we saw it at the very beginning of the, of the conversation and the problem solving that we were doing. Um, 
Uh, there's just like no convenient way to write these and these there's parentheses all over the place you're not sure where to put the parentheses where to put the brackets and in the end it looks like a mess um, so you're looking something like this and you're looking something like this and I just hate the way I drew this but all right maybe it's a little well, whatever hopefully it's a little easier to look at you just, the big thing is you know there, there's gonna be a cosine get an answer there's gonna be a sign get an answer then you multiply the two and that's why I'm I'm so I'm maybe overly meticulous with the brackets that I put in there. Uh, they are telling us y1, y1, y1 of x comma t is 3.0 sine Okay, there's decimal places all over the place. Kind of give ourselves a shorthand. You can sometimes get rid of them. Right now, let me not. Let me kind of be pretty faithful as to how they wrote it. Okay, it's a, it's a mess, but okay, here we go. The resultant wave will be the addition of the two waves. When you do that, we'll do the games we've been playing in the past. How do these games get played? <coughs> uh, remember, there's a three in front of both. There's a three in front of both. So whatever you do, multiply by three at the end. There's a three in front of both. There's a three in front of both, so ignore it and just do this. That's all this times two. Oh yeah, times two, but there was a three in front of both, so it's two times three. So it's gonna be two times 3.0 when you're doing that. Then it's gonna be the sine of, uh, how, did, how did they say to do that? Uh, one of them's alpha and the other one's beta and you add them together and you get you get 4 pi x minus 30 pi t plus pi over 2 yeah then divide it by 2 divide the 4 pi x by 2 you get 2 pi x again divide the negative 30 pi t by 2 you get negative 15 pi t again and divide the pi over 2 by 2 and you get pi over 4 so Okay, that's the argument we did last time is what it is. Same thing. Um, cosine of the quantity a half of this. What, what the heck's that? That's all of this minus all of that, and, and this stuff goes. These are the same in both places. All of this minus all of that, all of this minus all of that. All of this stuff goes, and this guy's left over. It's pi over 2. Half of pi over 2 is pi over 4. Guys, to say, this should look familiar. We've done this. Something very similar to this. Great. What do you got? What can we do? Um, well, I mean, I, there's, there's, there's a whole bunch you can do, I guess. Let me... Uh, Try to stay at a good level here with, with this whole with this whole process. All right, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Tell, tell you what I'm going to do, guys. Um, pi over 4, pi over 4, the cosine of pi over 4 is 1 over the square root of 2. Or square root of 2 over 2. It's 1 over the square root of 2 is what it is. Pi over 4, pi over 4 radians is the same as 180 degrees divided by 4. Pi over 4 radians is the same as 180 degrees divided by 4 is 45 degrees.
Hello, guys. Uh, lost the mic on that one. I'm sorry. Um, for a bit now, maybe. Let's see how, how far that went. Um, there you go. At least hopefully I wrote clearly enough that you were catching what I was doing before that. Um, let's see what we can say, guys. Let me mic up again here on this. All right. So what is the amplitude, you guys? The amplitude four point two four meters. Um, B the frequency Omega is two pi F. F equals omega over 2 pi. Omega is 15 pi. Seven point five hertz. Uh, yeah, absolutely. C. What is lambda? This is the K. K equals two pi. Multiply by lambda on each side and divide by k. Multiply by lambda on each side and divide by k. You got 2 pi uh, the k is 15 I'm sorry, forgive me. I, the k is this one actually. It's, it's 2 pi also. Lambda is one meter. And that's that, you guys. Uh, let's go to 66. 66, they gave you two wave functions. Describe two transverse. These two wave functions describe two transverse sinusoidal waves traveling along a rope where X and Y are in meters and T is in seconds. What is the maximum transverse displacement of a rope element located at x equals 1 meter and x equals 3 meters? What, where are the, th the first three antinodes located along the rope? Antinodes are the highest parts. So let's take a look at that. It's very similar to what we've been doing thus far, you guys. Okay, what do we got here, guys? Uh, for this one, they're playing very, very similar game that we were doing last time. And we should, uh, should be pretty straightforward for us. I think it's very, very similar to what we've done. Uh, for both A and B, cosine has to be a maximum value. They got all this 
stuff on there that we did last time. So let's look at it, you guys. Basically, they're giving us, they want us to do They want us to do that. Well, we've been, we're, we're pros at this now, guys. We've seen this stuff. Sorry, guys, like I said, I lost the mic on this. I don't know where. I guess my, my colleague will find out exactly where it was. But luckily, um, fortunately, I, I make, you can see what I wrote at least. So you can, you can follow that way. I'm sorry about that. Um, just I'll err on the side of caution. Maybe have, I don't want to waste the batteries, but maybe I don't, uh, maybe it's not even a problem. I hate to just put brand new batteries in it just about every time I come in here. It should be okay. Um, they gave me the green light to do so. I just didn't feel too right about it. But uh, I don't want the mic to die on us either in the future. So we'll, fi we'll figure it out. Uh, but you should have the overwhelming majority of this stuff. And at least you have it written down in front of you as well. Um, let's see what we got here, guys. Uh, we got this. They gave us this. True. Uh, we also know that y, when you add the two, when you add two, of, when you add the two together, you're going to get what we've talked about in the past. Well, this one we can almost do in our sleep, guys. We've seen this enough times, right? Um, times cosine yeah a lot of ways you can write it uh, look at the end of the day guys do the same song and dance we've been doing alpha and beta tell you what let's call it doesn't matter who we call who I guess let's make it easy so we don't have any negatives when we do the subtraction call this guy alpha this whole thing is the angle alpha Whole thing is the angle alpha, whole thing is the angle beta. What is alpha? What is alpha plus beta? What is all of this plus all of that? What's alpha plus beta? Well, yeah, these two together, they cancel out. Yeah, these two together, you get 0 0.7. 0 0.7 pi x, that's it on that one. So you got, on this one, you're going to get y is going to be 2 uh y max and the y max is they even put the max in front of us the 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 y max was 1.20 you're just going to double it then you're going to go sine let's go uh take them together go half add them together add these two you got zero add these two you got 0.7 pi x then divide it by two you got 0.35 pi x. Here you got cosine. Uh, here's alpha, here's beta. Take this, subtract that from it. This, subtract that is zero. This, subtract a minus. Minus a minus is plus. It's pi over 2 pi plus pi over 2. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, pi over 2 t. It becomes pi over 2 t plus pi over 2 t. It's pi t. Divided by 2, pi over 2, t. Yeah, the more things change, guys, the more they become the same. I mean, or the more they're similar to the stuff we were talking about beforehand. At the end of the day, when this, when this stuff happens, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be very, very close to what we were talking about in the past. Very, very similar. And again, the notes here are a little more comprehensive than I had there. For x equals 1 meter, for both a and b, cosine has to be a, now let's see, now they're saying a. 
uh, A is saying, X equals, you know, what is the maximum transverse displacement of a rope element located at X equals 1 and at X equals 3? That's A and B. Well, uh, for A and B, the max, the, the, this guy's got to be a maximum value. That's got to be a maximum value. And this one, you can't really, you can't do much about it because you got A, x equals 1. You put a 1 right here, you, you kind of stuck. You know, x, you know, so if x equals 1, and this guy's got to be a max. Well, the max is going to occur here at t equals 0. Um, you know, at t equals 2, the cosine of pi, you guys, is negative 1. So I can't have that. Well, I can, but it'd be a displacement in another direction. They want to know the maximum displacement that's going to take place here. Um, what is the maximum transverse displacement of a rope element at there? Okay. The maximum it can have here is if this whole song and dance is 0 in here, or pi, or 2 pi, or 3, you know. Typically, it's, it's, it's 0. Uh, to, to get for sure to get 1, 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, etc. Cosine of all this has got to be 1. Okay? Okay, 1 it is. Put a 1 right here. 1 times pi times 0 0.35. 0 0.35 pi radians, the sine of it, get an answer. Get an answer of point, put a 1 right there. 1 right here. 0.35 pi, now you got to get the sine. You can't alter that. This you can alter, you can get it to be 1. Because t can vary, but not for x equals 1. For x equals 1, uh, for, for, for x equals 1, it's, it's the sine of 0.35 pi. The sine of 0.35 pi is an answer times 1.2 times 2. Uh, and what do you got? You got, well, you go 2 times 1.20 is 2.4 times the sine of 0.35 pi times 1. The sine of the quantity, 0.35 pi times 1, the sine of that times 2.4. Y equals, this implies, the biggest value it can attain, biggest displacement, either up or down, is this. That's A. For B, make that a 1 and put a 3 here. For B, it's x equals 3. Here it's, you know, 1 meter, 3 meters. And x equals 3. So what are you going to do? 3 times pi times 0.35, right? Let's put a 3 right here. 3, 3 times pi, 3 times pi times 0.35, get the sine of that product then multiply it by 2 times 1.20. When you do that, you get, you know, that implies What does it mean? And again, we, the way we did it was, you got this guy, you know, you're always assuming for that to happen in, in bo for both A and B, for both A and B, this guy's got to be equal to 1. Somewhere we got to find the T that does that. It's got to be equal to 1. You put a 1 in here, 1 times pi times 0.35, get an answer, get the sign of that many radians when you have a 1 right here. 1 times pi times 0 0.35. 0 0.35 pi radians, the sine of that, the sine of 0.35 pi radians times 2 times 1.20. That got me right here. For the 3, again, got to have it be a 1 for this right here. Put a 3 here. 3 times pi times 0.35, that's 1.05 pi. The sine of 1.05 pi, the sine of 1.05 
0 0.05 pi radians times 1.20 times 2 gives you the song and dance at the end what does that mean? well it means the absolute value 375 meters so that's A and B now they're saying for this one where are the first three antinodes located along the row? Antinodes are places of maximum displacement. I'm still going to keep this guy at one. Why? Because it's the maximum way I can get one. You got to get the rest of this, however. This guy's also got to be one. This guy's also got to be one. So how's he going to get that? Well, where's that going to happen? It's going to happen. See, you got to get a max. These guys don't change. The 2 and the 1.20 don't change. This guy's got to be at a max, and that's got to be at a max. For this guy to be at a max, for this guy to be at a max, we got to have numbers like zero, you know, time t equals 0, um, t equals 2, t equals 4, t equals 6, all in seconds, because it'll go, it'll go negative 1 or positive 1. The absolute value's got to be 1. Some of these are going to be negative one, too, but I just want the displacement uh, for antinodes, where they're located. Because the antinodes will be up and down. So it'll happen at places like, uh, they didn't really ask us, but this, this will oscillate up and down at places like um, at zero, at two, because two times that is pi. Four times that is two pi. Six times that is 3 pi. 8 times that is 4 pi. You get the picture. Some are going to be up, some are going to be down. This is going to be on the upside. Uh, th this, you know, this will be positive 1. This will yield a positive 1. This will yield a negative 1. This will yield a positive 1 again. And this will yield, uh, let me just see here, uh, exactly how that would go. 3 pi, yeah, 2 pi there, 3 pi Right, this, this would be on the negative side. This would be on the positive side again. Okay, whatever. All of these, are, you know, so this is going to be 1, 1, 1. This will be negative 1, but it's still, it still gives you a maximum, a maximum punch that will punch it down or punch it up to a maximum place. Okay, they're not really going there. They're not going there, so let's not just worry about it. The big thing is... Let's just take the ones, the, the, you know, the ones if you want, just to make it easier to look at. At time t equals 0 seconds, t equals 4 seconds, t equals 8 seconds, you get the picture. Uh, every 4 seconds, uh, we're in a situation that's going to get us to the maximum one. Well, I need it to be one. I need that to be one also. That's the big thing. Uh, the sign of, this thing's got to be, in, and it, it, could go, it could go positive or negative. I almost, I almost take back what I said, guys. Here are the ones. Here are the negative ones. They're all going to work. And here I can get negatives too. Here I can get negative numbers too. So that's not a big deal. Pos as long as it's positive one, negative one, or positive one, or negative one, and this guy could be positive one or negative one. This could be positive one, and this could be positive one or negative one. The multiplication of one and one. Multiply one and one, you get one. Multiply negative one and negative one, you get one. Multiply one and negative one, you get negative one, but you still get a maximum displacement. So they all work. Well, let me not drive you crazy with it, guys. Just take this right here. The sign of that. And that's going to equal plus or minus 1. And for that to happen, to get plus or minus 1, this argument has got to be pi over 2 and any integer multiple, positive or negative. 
Any integer multiple, positive or negative, we're not going to worry about which, we'll go on the positive side, but it can be po let's go positive side because it can be the number of nodes. Uh, if n is equal, n is equal to 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 that'll make it work. Actually, let me go back on that. Let me go back on that. That's not true. They got to be odd because if you get an even one, you're going to get pi. The sine of pi is 0. So I'm going to have to take it back, guys. You're going to have to go n equals 1, n equals 3, n equals 5, n equals 7, dot, 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 like that. That right there is what this guy's got to be equal to. 0.35 pi x. Really? Yeah, really. Let's divide by pi on each side. Let's divide by 0.35 on each side. n over 2 times 0.35 is 0.7. 1, 3, 5, 7. What does that mean? Well, that means... That means there's an n equals 1, n equals 3, and n equals 5. Uh, let's go. Plug x equals 1 right here. What's 1 divided by 0 0.7? Plug in, x, plug in n equals 1 right here. 1 divided by 0.7 is 1.43 meters. I'm going to write the meter under here, guys. Just make sure you can read it. Plug the 3 in here. Yeah. Um, it's 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 two more. It's 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 actually three times the size of this guy. Three divided by 0.7. Three times the size of that is what it comes out to. 4.29. Five times the 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 size of that is going to be 7.15 or 14 here. I guess the way that the numbers came out, but. Um, Sorry, guys, I kind of ran out of room a little bit, but you know where I'm coming from. Uh, X is equal to that right there. X is equal to that right there. X is equal to that right there. Those are where all the nodes are going to be. So for... E x equals 1.43 meters, x equals 4.29 meters, x equals 7.14 meters. Yeah, 1.43 meters, 4.29 meters, 7.14 meters. All right, guys, it's a lot of it. Um, check out my guy. Forgive the audio. If you, if you stuck, stuck through this whole thing, this more than two-hour adventure, uh, you know, hopefully you can get through it without some of the audio that's on there. I hope, I, I hope the lion's share of it did get on there. I'm going to talk to my contact person, and we'll take it from there. Thank you for your time, okay? Take care.